Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Myth versus reality, notches. Botches? We ain't got no botches. No, no, notches. We are away down south in Natchez, where the Mississippi silently wends its way. Finally, delicious nachos you don't have to fight over. Come together with the new Nachos Party Pack from Taco Bell. As an impressionable youth, I saw enough westerns to solidify certain mistruths that have, over time, been corrected. The concern is that taking away what we think will somehow minimize the romance of the Old West. However, for me, it doesn't. If anything, researching the real stuff gives me an idea how films and dime novels enhanced some of these facts. Then I can present it to you. See how that works? I understand. Did they stand 50 paces away from each other and see who was the fastest on the draw in a suspenseful showdown? No, but the idea is based on actual events. Getting your gun into play and hitting your target as fast as possible is a factual thing. Here's the myth. Hollywood cemented the idea that gunfighters put notches in their gun grips for every man they killed. Wyatt Earps and Dodge. Oh no, Zach. Don't tell me we're scared of that Cowtown Marshal. 19 notches, and I'll cut me number 20 for Mr. Earp. Although this grip abuse is akin to keeping a trophy of your conquests, it's hard to believe two men sitting around a campfire comparing gun notches. Is this how you used to do it, Pa? How come you never put any notches on your gun? The origin of it all might go to our indigenous warriors who counted coup by touching their enemies and riding away unhurt. After a battle, they would put marks on a coup stick to signify the warriors they bested. Guns during wartime which bear the marks could be kills. Famous General George Patton notched his Colt single action after taking down one of Pancho Villa's thugs and his horse. He also took the man's spurs. I guess Patton wanted two trophies. Americans love a winner! However, on the civilian scene, it becomes a fuzzy subject. I've not seen a gun used by a renowned shootist from the era that sports notches in the grips, but I haven't seen them all. Say, mister, you're Billy the Kid, ain't you? That's what they tell me. See, what did they tell you? Have you really got 20 notches in your gun? I found numerous references to gun notches in newspapers of the period, but it seems more like solidifying the subject's reputation than actual firearm personalization. This article about the very dead and ventilated outlaw George Bitter Creek Newcomb mentions his rifle having some notches on it. They presume it's connected to his kills, but presumption is about as far as it goes. It appears it wasn't just grips, but also the frame and barrel of the firearm could exhibit some notches. It was not unusual in South Texas's Mexican culture to ward off evil spirits by carving an X on the gun or in the grip panels. I guess the paranormal isn't afraid of firearms otherwise. All right, family. Instead of the Ghostbusters, if you saw a ghost for real, who you gonna call? I'm gonna call a coroner. Call who? A coroner to come pick up the ghost body. Coroner! So, did they notch their guns? Yeah. It seems some did. However, it's a tricky thing to prove due to some of these guns being passed down over the years. Especially during the 1950s heyday of westerns when putting a few notches on the grip would help it sell. Yeah, I'll buy that when there are American bison in Scandinavia. Hi there Santi and Arizona Ghost Riders. Just a little greeting from me and my little friend over here at High Chaparral, Sweden. Hey folks, I'm not condemning any reenactors who carve notches in their grips. If your character sports them, own that choice and make us audience members believers. We just proved that because things weren't common, it doesn't mean they didn't exist. 
Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail.